So now that we've had a chance to walk through some of the basic operators that are defined in the mono class in Project Reactor, including factory methods such as just and from callable, transformation operators, things like map. We talked about the do on success action operator and the then suppressing operator. It's time to turn our attention to a case study that puts all the pieces together. And this case study will illustrate how all those methods are going to be applied in the context of an interesting example that will do some reductions and operations on various types of big fractions. You can find this example in the EX1 folder in my GitHub repository at the link below. So this particular example, we're now going to walk through it in detail, and I'm going to show you how the code works. And I'm, of course, also going to show you how to run the code and see what the output's going to be. And we'll have a chance to kind of dissect it line by line as we go through the code in the IntelliJ project I've got here. So we're now inside my IntelliJ project for the EX1 case study for Project Reactor's Mono class. We'll start by taking a look at the main driver program. And this driver program is going to show how to apply Project Reactor basic mono operations to reduce and display big fractions using things like from callable, map, do on success, and then. So as you can see, here's the main program. It uses the async task barrier that we talked about earlier in order to register a pair of test method references. One's called test fraction reduction sync one, and the other is called test fraction reduction sync two. And then what it does is it will go ahead and run those methods. They run synchronously because we haven't introduced the concept of asynchrony yet in the examples we've talked about from mono. So this will be very simple, but we can use the async task barrier framework nonetheless. That will go ahead and run those two methods, wait until the results are finished, and then it'll go ahead and print out the number of tests that were run, which should be two in this case. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and run the program just to show you what it does. So we compile it, we execute it, and you can see it goes ahead and prints out calling test fraction reduction sync one, and there's some results, which we'll look at in a second. And then it also calls the same thing for test fraction reduction sync two. And you can notice that test one comes before test two because it's done synchronously. And you can also see here that everything's called in the main thread, which is always the thread with the ID of one. Okay, so let's go ahead now and take a look at the source code and you'll get a chance to see what's actually going on under the hood. So to see that, we're gonna go over to mono EX, which is just the class that contains those methods. We're gonna define ourselves a static big fraction called S unreduced fraction. And as you can see here, it's got a value that contains a numerator and a denominator, which will be these big integers. And if you take a look over here, you can see we've got a nice, big, juicy, big integer numerator and a nice, juicy, big integer denominator. And together, those things are going to be passed in. And we're going to have an unreduced fraction. And the reason it's unreduced is because we, we pass in the false Boolean saying, don't do any reductions. We're going to do the reductions when we actually run the code in a minute. So here is the test fraction reduction sync one method. This will test synchronous big fraction reduction using a mono and a pipeline of operations, basic operations that run in the context of the calling thread, which in this case is the main thread, thread ID one. So we start out by using the just method, that factor method to go ahead and reduce the unreduced fraction that will run in the calling thread. Then we go ahead and we use the do on success method, which is that method that's the, the action operator. And in this case, we're going to go ahead and append the output to a string builder. Right now, it might not be clear why we need a string builder, but later you'll see why we need to have one when we start dealing with asynchronous operations. And then, so in this case, we're just going to print out some information about the improper fraction and the call to the two mixed string and so on. We then go ahead and call the map method. Remember, map is a transformation operator, which will take the improper fraction that we got from just and convert it to a mixed string. So now we have a, a proper fraction or a mixed fraction. And then the last thing we do is, uh, not the not last thing, next to the last thing we do is we once again call do on success. And now we're going to go ahead and append another string that'll indicate what the result is. So. The result of this is going to be the mixed reduced fraction. And we'll go ahead and tell 
the uh, utility library to display this and it'll print it on the output of the screen. We'll go back and re revisit that in a second. The last thing that we do here, and this, this may not be clear at first, but it'll become a lot more clear when we talk about asynchronous processing, is we call the then method. And then as an example of a suppressing operator that will return an empty mono, and we use that to synchronize with the async task barrier framework. So what'll happen here is when this computation is done, then at that point, the results will be displayed or will have been displayed by the time everything's done. For the synchronous case, this is kind of overkill, but it's done this way to make it real easy to go from synchronous to asynchronous without having to change any of the boilerplate code for the driver program. Let's come down here and take a look now at test fraction reduction sync two. And this is going to demonstrate a couple other methods from mono instead of using just, which we had done up here, which called it in the main thread or uh, would always call it the main thread. Down here, we're gonna use the from callable method. Remember, just is eager, whereas from callable is lazy. Now, in this particular example, the difference between lazy and uh, eager doesn't really matter. But when we start adding threading, which we'll do when we get to the next example in our case study series, we'll see a big difference because that'll allow the computation to take place in a different thread. So right now, we're just using from callable instead of just. We once again log the results using, in this case, a, a log method called log big fraction, which is basically doing what we had done up here just as a, a lambda expression. And then down here, we once again convert that big uh, reduced big fraction to a mixed string. And then we display that. And then we use the dot then operator to kind of wrap things up at the end of this chain of processing. So let's now take a look again at the results. And now that we've gone through the code, the results probably make a bit more sense. You can see that we made the initial call for the unreduced big fraction, which was this big unreduced big fraction. It reduced it to this improper fraction, nine halves. And then when we called the two mixed string, it converted that into a mixed or reduced fraction, a proper fraction, I suppose, which is four and a half. And you can see that both of the methods get the same results. It's just that one of them used just, whereas the other one used the for, uh, from callable method. For this particular case, when processing is done synchronously, not that different or probably pretty much identical, but we'll see later when we get into this uh, down the road, it, it's going to make a big difference and will uh, allow us to be able to do things in the background. So we start out here with a synchronous example because we haven't introduced some of the cool concurrency and scheduling operators that are part of Project Reactor, but that's coming next. So just hold your horses, we'll get there shortly.